Thanks for taking a break with us. I'm Mark, this is Arnone, and in today's break we'll talk benchmarks, DSPs for machine vision, and a whole lot more. But we begin by asking why are we even talking about DSPs when there is such a wide variety of general purpose processors out there? Everyone knows how to program these, and they are certainly capable of doing mathematical operations, the hallmark of the DSP. So I ask you, Arnone, can't today's general purpose processors do everything a DSP can do? Not really, uh, but I also say that it's not about just being able to do it, it's about being able to do it well and do it efficiently. Um, you know, there's a lot of data that comes in that needs to be processed, and, and general purpose processors can do it. They've built engines into, ARM's got their uh, Cortex engines that can do things, but they can't do them as efficiently. So, if, you know, in our market, they're really worried about power. Anything over five watts, they have to add fans, fans are unreliable, you want to run for 10 years without braking. You can't have that. So it's really about the, the best bang for your dollar and for the amount of energy consumed because that turns into heat and they can't dissipate it when they're out, out in, you know, in, the, in the open and they don't have you know, any way to cool it. So it's not so much about just being able to do it. You have to be able to do it really well and they just can't do it as well as DSPs. Yeah, and the other thing that they can't do is when we go back to the concept of real-time processing, which we talked about in another uh, video, right? So their architecture just isn't built for that to be able to handle interrupts real-time, and, and their operating system is, is an architecture for that. So if you have a real hard real-time requirement, DSPs can do that, and general purpose processors just aren't built for yeah, it. Yeah, and you know, there's your reliability. I mean, you know, we have been building DSPs to run for 10, 20 years without stopping. 100,000 power on hours, never stopped, 100% full bore all the time, and it's not generally what you know, other things have to do. Like, if you think about your handheld electronics, they, they don't run all the time. Yeah, so if you talk about spaces like mission critical, automotive, medical, places that, that the thing really needs to work without fail, right? DSP yeah. has a history of that. Yeah, so there's, there's just a lot of differences. Yeah, so it's kind of a ridiculous question, actually, I guess. <laughs> We won't go there. Um, so, you know, clearly DSPs are better in some places than general purpose processors. You know, one of these application areas um, is a place where, where you have some expertise, um, I will admit. Uh, this area is machine vision. So, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about machine vision and the use of DSPs And I know there. that hurt to call me an expert in anything. Yeah, yeah, a little. <laughs> yeah, but machine vision is, is a very wide space where it covers a lot of different areas. Uh, and essentially, you're, you're taking in uh, visual input uh, and you're doing some processing and, and providing an intelligent output, making some kind of decision about the rest of the system. And there's a lot of applications like that. There's a, a lot of factory and industrial uh, type applications where you know you have to scan things going by rapidly on like a, a factory assembly line and determine if it's uh, the correct uh, type or maybe even do an alignment on it. Uh, similarly, it can be used in currency inspection machines. ATMs use a lot of uh, machine vision. Uh, and of course, the, the automotive space and security and surveillance does that a lot. So there's a lot of different spaces and TI's got a lot of different processors that help you know, vary across all these spaces from very small, like the OMAP L138, very low power for small embedded processing. You know, I, you know, I do think that uh, the processing capability um, and the cost and the, the compute power is finally getting to the point where robotics and machine vision is going to be everywhere, right? You know, and I think yeah. DSPs are helping bring, bring that out. You know, we'll actually see a lot more of this going on. Yeah, and I really think it's the capability where we we talk often about like added intelligence to the system, right? right. Where, the, where the DSP is kind of the brains behind the processing that brings that to you. So that next level, a lot of those, those uh, sci-fi things we've seen in movies, they're going to be coming soon, and DSPs are going to bring them to you. Yeah, awesome. We'll en enable Terminator, Skynet, perfect. Yeah, we'll bring that to you. <laughs> So, one of the things engineers who are used to using either FPGAs or GPUs find helpful when comparing architectures are benchmarks. Whether they are for FFTs or some other common function, these benchmarks are used as a way of determining performance of a processing solution. So, Arnone, how does TI's DSP benchmarks compare against FPGAs and GPUs? Um, well, you know, their benchmarks are better. You want to elaborate? Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, benchmark can be very deceiving. Uh, you oh. know, they're kind of like statistics. Um, it, according to one report I read, uh, they were showing that FPGAs had something like ten times the performance of uh, Intel processors that are used in some of the biggest supercomputers in the world. Um, but can you guess how many supercomputers in the world use FPGAs? Seven. Zero. Oh. Um, and, and that's kind of my point. You know, you can take an architecture that isn't programmable and you can set it up to do one function and it can just you know knock it out of the park. That's really not, again, it gets back to apples to apples versus apples and oranges. You know, DSP benchmarks, um, you know, we did a, a recent work with uh, PayPal, you might have heard of them. Yeah. Um, they published a great result on uh, something like 12 gigaflops per watt, which is, if you look, it's actually a really good number um, in, in, yeah. you know, for anything programmable, and the DSPs achieve that in their application. So the, our benchmarks are actually very, very strong. But you have to be really careful with benchmarks. Yeah, you know, benchmarks I equate a lot <laughs> to like statistics and sports, right? You can almost find a statistic to back up almost any argument you want, but it's really how you can, because it can be skewed though. So, so you really have to understand the application, know what the benchmark is saying, instead 
instead of just like here's a benchmark. Let's let's use that as the end. Yeah, and I, I you know I, it's really frustrating because of course you know people want to be able to easily categorize it. So hey, what's your benchmark for this? And they want that to just be the the solution. And y y there's this. You know, so much more to it. Yeah, and you're right. Is that apples to orange things? Like a benchmark just doesn't work across yeah. things. You know, now, w but when we say ours are better than than general purpose processors, that's absolutely dead on. Yeah, there, there's yeah. no that, yeah, that's you, apples to apples. You which can't argue. Actually, it's actually a pretty good party game as well. Uh, all right, with that, let's uh, let's move to the big finish. All right, let's do it. All right, movie time. Uh, Age of Ultron has passed. Uh, so, do you have anything left to look forward to this summer? Ah, there's a lot to look forward to, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe uh, Ant-Man might be the next good one, because it's a good superhero Ant origin story. Ant-Man origin? Ant it's a Marvel origin Ant story. Ant-Man. All right, let's, um, Terminator Genesis looks like a, a, a nifty one. How about you? Uh, you know, I think Jurassic World, I was lucky enough to be uh, in Hawaii last year where they were filming some of it. I'm kind of excited to see that, you know, some of the yeah. shots. From, no one cares from that you were in Hawaii. Yeah, but I'm sorry, I had do, to throw that out they there. They do yeah. care about Chris Pratt, Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy, so that's good. All right, so I know combined, the two of us have been with TI for over oh 35 years. So That's it's no scary. secret we love working here. What's the best thing about working at TI? Uh, you know, I, I, it really sounds trite to say it, but uh, the people, I, I've really been fortunate to work with some really, um, really, really bright engineers, really great people. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I know that's what everybody says, but it, it's been true. I think it's what's kept us here for so long. Yeah, present company accepted. The people here are great. Um, I think it's a toss up between the people and the idea that my uh, office is four miles from the beach. No, actually, it's the off that my office is four miles from the beach. That's the best thing about working here. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, well, flip it around. Well, what's the worst thing about working here? Four miles from the beach, dude. That's a little too far to walk. Did you hear me? Four miles. Uh, you know, I lived in San Diego, for San Diego for a long time, so I think the worst part for me is that the fact you live so close to the beach. <laughs> it just kills me. Okay, we're out of time. Thanks for taking a break with us. Tweet us your questions and comments using the hashtag DSP. DSP break, and we'll address them in future videos. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Check out ti.com slash dreamdsp for all the latest info and material on TI DSPs. And to help you remember DSP, my catchphrase will be Drax, Star-Lord, Pratt. All right, more Guardians of the Galaxy, great. Yes. <laughs>